Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Northwest Talent Spotlight. I'm your host Andy Madsen. Tonight we're going to feature the music of Travis Peterson, an up-and-coming rising star here in the Vancouver area. He plays with his father and the rhythm section are two brothers, so I think you're going to really enjoy tonight's show. Stick around for the music of Travis Peterson on Northwest Talent Spotlight. Welcome. My guest tonight is Travis Peterson. Just got through playing the song The Undertow. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. So uh, tell us a little bit about the song first, and then we'll get into the history that we have here sitting up front. So, right. um, Well, like The Undertow, I was just kind of sitting in my room one day and just kind of decided to go I kind of look back on actually an experience I had in the hospital. And I was just looking up at the ceiling and under, well, drugs, you know, all the... <laughs> Uh, stuff they Sedation. give you yeah exactly <laughs> I just kind of was seeing things and then I was just so when I sat down on my piano I kind of just had this vision of what I wanted to be in a song and that's just kind of how it came about and I just thought it'd be cool to like talk about things you see but they're not really there so that was kind of what it was about very cool you yeah. 
You uh, have been writing for how long, uh, been a singer-songwriter? Um, I mean, really, probably since I was like uh -huh. at least 10 or 11, somewhere on there. Or should I ask Dad that question? Now? Maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe more well, let's, let's go <laughs> along uh, here and uh, just introduce yourselves. You are obviously uh, Travis yeah, Peterson. Travis Peterson. And this is your older brother, uh, yeah. Wade, <laughs> father. Okay. Yeah. This is Tom Peterson. Yeah, I'm Andy oh. Hodgson. I'm Bryce. So uh, as you can tell by the introductions, we have uh, a father and son and brothers holding down the rhythm section. So is that ever a conflict? Do you uh, guys like two on two sometimes to uh, try and resolve issues when you're Usually on this side, one on this side. Yeah, we have it? internal fights. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a brother thing, right? It's a brother so, thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, let's go to the, the uh, matriarch here, the patriarch of the band. You started playing. <laughs> Uh, way back? Uh, like sixth grade. Sixth grade, yeah, okay. Yeah, About the same age as when crazy. he started. And yeah. well, he started a little bit later than that. Now, I want to ask you a question that Not kind much. of seems odd. When you were uh, growing up, did he initially grow, get right into music, or was he one of those kids that wanted to go just play catch with a baseball or something, or was it always uh, trying to pick up your guitar and steal it and <laughs> he play wanted it? To, he wanted to play music, you can mm -hmm. tell. Yeah. And uh, he just started doing it right away. I mean. Mm -hmm. There was not stopping him, nothing stopping him. Now, uh, you're how old? You're 20, <laughs> 21, 22? 21, just turned 21. 21. So. I have socks that old, but uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm not wearing them tonight, luckily. So, uh, so what style of music do you, uh, did you initially start playing? I mean, um, well, I really was kind of turned on to country music and mm -hmm. uh, kind of just, I love, I mean, I kind of like the mainstream stuff on the like, you know, Z100 and all that, but at the same time, I got a lot of, I love like the John Mayer, you right. know, more bluesy style mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of jazz and because I was in band actually, I played jazz ba bass for like four or five years. And, and that's what, was that your first instrument, right? Was yeah, it bass, bass guitar, guitar and then, yeah. um, piano right behind it or was you um, always actually, had one in the house? Yeah, his old acoustic, this old Ibanez, I just kind of started strumming oh, on that. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and just ever since then I've just kind of Kind of worked my way. I tried to figure it so out. So you all have been together as a band about uh, since '06. Is that correct? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. About five ish years. And yeah. how did you hooked up? Where through church or something? I guess is that. Yeah, we were. Well, he started on the worship team at a church, and then mm -hmm. he dragged me into it, and then they showed up. <laughs> and, uh, so you guys were in the initial starters of the band, and then yeah, these guess, guys just kind of yeah. fell into yeah. place, so, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, so. We like that. We're just using <laughs> that for drums and bass. He more sought us out. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. when did you write, how old were you when you wrote your first song? Let me ask you that oh, question. Oh, man. I really don't even know, to be honest yeah. with you. That's Do you remember the name of your first song that you ever wrote? Oh, Come on, man. it's going to embarrass you probably. But. Oh, man, it's a piano song. Uh, what's it called? I can't, I can't even think about it. Just like it was yesterday. See, just have, wait till you get wow, to my it's, age. It's you, bad. you won't remember <laughs> things at all. So. Oh, man. And, uh, is it a love song? Yeah, it is. I'm just trying to brainstorm it. <laughs> you okay. guys can go. I'll just that's uh, right. try to recuperate Tom, this. Tom, let's hear a little bit about your musical history. Now, what kind of music did you grow up with? And, and you know, uh, you're kind of an influence on him, I would imagine. Yeah. In some we started in like uh, high school playing, junior high, with a little band playing. Mm -hmm. Just getting together and, and uh, playing. We played like little talent shows at school and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they, uh, we got into a, another band and then we played, uh, played a couple of dances for the schools. You know, they wanted us, so that was good. <laughs> and then, uh, well, after high school, we had a, like a rock band and played all around. Mm -hmm. We were kind of doing our own thing. You know. And you've played all different styles, though, haven't you? Rock yeah. and uh, yeah, pretty much. some heavier stuff as well. As yes. So, yeah, we've all been down that road a few times. Um, I just happened to have a CD by uh, some guy I know named uh, Travis. Uh, this is your, <laughs> Look at that. Uh, yeah. The Miracles of Showmanship. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about your CD. Uh, how long has it been out and uh, um, your website? You know, this is this uh, show yeah. is about trying to promote uh, musicians as yourself. So we want to give you that opportunity. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're on Facebook, iTunes, uh, Amazon Music. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I got up with you on Reverb Nation, so oh, you're, Reverb Nation. you're cool. doing you're you're doing it the right way, and I mean yeah. that's that's really important to yeah, get even, out there. Yeah, even kind of launch some of our stuff on YouTube as well, so people can see the actual videos versus just you know right. the MP3s. But uh, this time around, uh, it's it's one of the first albums we kind of meshed together when we first came together and um, started writing music. And, mm -hmm. Um, it's got a little bit more of a rock feel to it than what we're doing now. We're kind of okay. moving towards more of an acoustic, you know. 
more uh, laid back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit more laid back okay. with a little rock in there as well. Oh, yeah, sure, got to have a little fun. Yeah, got to have some fun. Well, we're going to have some more music coming up yeah. uh, with Travis Peterson here on Northwest Talent Spotlight. Stick around. Let the afternoon pass by I've got my six string And I'm strumming songs for you Like a lighthouse on the coast I can sail on so close So come on, come on, come on That or a beer at a rising line in a shade of blue. I wish I wasn't here all alone. But we could stay out here forever, but it only makes it better when I'm out here with you. Yes, it does. Just like two hearts moving to the same beat Or a fast car driving at a slow speed With the windows down You've got your hands in the air Your feet on the dash It's just one of those nights where we both want
someday Changing lanes and passing cars along the way And I could feel you and me Walking down the street hand in hand yeah. Wishing you were in the passenger seat Riding next to me yeah. It's a lifetime without you back with Travis Peterson here on Northwest Talent Spotlight. Uh, tell us a little bit about these songs you just played for us because they are not currently on uh, the CD that's out and you're going to go back in the studio and put these down and... Yeah, actually, yeah, we, they're just all brand new songs, four brand new songs and we're just going to try to get those out there as well as like the new CD, the old CD we have, we've been trying mm -hmm. to promote for that still, but of course we want to move on to newer things. So. Right, do you have most of the songs already kind of pre-written, ready to go? Or oh, just... yeah, I mean... Pretty much from A to B, there mm -hmm. or Z. <laughs> and what's what's the length it takes you usually from start to finish for a song? I mean, is there a timeline, or does is there a certain way that it's brought into the band? I know it's it's your name on the album, but I mean, does Dad say, "Hey, check out this riff," or you start even with a, a yeah. drum beat all or a bass riff? Does everybody right, collectively yeah. help write oh, yeah. the songs? Definitely. So. I mean, yeah. I've written a few, and then I yeah. throw them yeah. to him, and mm -hmm. he comes up with some stuff on guitar. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well. Tell us a little bit about, uh, we've talked on this end, tell us a little bit about, about your history, uh, your, how you got introduced to music and... Uh, well, yeah, you started. Did I start? You played <laughs> Who's the older one? That's where we got to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. yeah clarinet. <laughs> I played wood okay. And then okay. I, I got braces though and I couldn't do the read, you know. So right. I was like, oh, I just got so drums. bad I was hitting things. I was like, might as well just play, be in band still, so. Yeah. Very cool. Started on drums. Similar route. I played trumpet until I got braces too and then 
switch to bass. <laughs> it could have been like a yeah. jazz band. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been, could have been, been a great jazz band. Yeah. I mean, but look at that smile, folks. Yeah. I mean, come that on, works. it was worth it. So, yeah. um, so <laughs> you've been uh, in the industry not a very long time, but you've you've really raised the bar. I you know I've checked out your website and stuff, and you guys are putting on some very high quality stuff. Um, uh, it's, it's just cool to see. Uh, someone from even, not that I'm old, but the generation that maybe Tom and I feel that you guys are going to be like the next generation that's bringing out music uh, to the masses. And I'm really enjoying your style. I think you and I talked a little bit earlier about uh, society's perception of young people. That yeah. They're either going to like rap or just metal or, mm -hmm. or different styles of music that they don't really uh, appreciate good quality music. And, the stuff you're writing has a lot of meaning. It seems like you put a lot of feeling into what yeah. you write. Uh, do you write all the lyrics, or do you guys collectively help? Uh, these, mean, uh, you having a block, or do you reach out to them? Or well, for these four songs we got going here, I mean, I pretty much had the song written out and everything. But I mean, mm -hmm. Andy's definitely contributed a lot of the words, Thanks. and like words. we're working together trying to make it, you know, mesh better, make it flow, so it's mm -hmm. not like stop here and oh man, it's, you know, it's kind of a yeah. weird transition. Right. So. And I, I, I'm just sensing this camaraderie, even with the four of you, that you seem very easygoing. I, <laughs> from being in bands and stuff, I've, you know, we're, it's like being married to three other guys. So <laughs> obviously there is those tensions, or there is. I saw the point over there. He was pointing at you. So, but I mean, I, I sense that you guys are all smiling, you know, with the freshly teeth worked on so that well, always, always. <laughs> no man but you guys seem like you get along genuinely he's the only one wearing makeup right now wow. <laughs> <laughs> man scare will yeah. do wonders so. <laughs> Just uh, so what's next for you where do you see you guys uh, gonna be in about a year I mean are you looking to open for some national acts are you trying to use your original music to get to that next level that's the plan we'll try. yeah it's kind of I kind of do a lot of the online managing so I just pitch press kits to so you, you run more of the business end of it He's as far as the our promotions? Agent right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At the moment, yeah. yeah. The moment. So he plays drums and gets ten percent on the side, right? Yeah, is that well, how that works? yeah I just see it as I hit things. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well that's very cool. I, I I just think it's a great genre that you I mean, I, I was reading your bio and I do hear some Keith Urban in your style as well. I mean I yeah. I see that country flair, but I I also see that you're bringing your own flavor to mm -hmm. it as well. Um, yeah. Tom, do you write songs and, and just help him with them? Or? I, uh, a lot of times I'll work on like maybe just the main, like a riff of the, of the song. Mm -hmm. Or he'll, he'll hear <laughs> you me can play hear, or You something. could say I stole his riff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Ruby yeah. Red, actually. Yeah. The yeah. beginning yeah. of Ruby Red, that little sliding that was, uh, guitar little part. Mm -hmm. That whole actually, beginning. I think I figured that out yeah. like sitting on a, uh, a cliff in San Diego one time. Just and that's where the play. lyrics kind of... And mm -hmm. it's, just, it's hung around for years, you know, some of those right. little riffs like that. And he spots them right away. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You're like, that's just the one. Yeah, I just thought <laughs> it was a really cool thing. Like, well, I like to come up with, a, you know, a, you know, not a hook or a, mm -hmm. a riff that stands out in the song, you know, that. Sure. Yeah. That's no, memorable. And, and, and it really shows. I mean, uh, I was just watching the performance here, and and just this father and son smile back and forth. You can tell when you guys are clicking on all cylinders because that smile comes across that yeah, we're getting this right, and that's. Right. That's a great thing to see. I mean, uh, as you guys as well, as, as brothers and a father and son, I think yeah. that's very rare to have that kind of a, a, a lineup in a band. So yeah, it's it's, uh, like it works well. So uh, Let's see. What else can we talk about? You've <laughs> been on television. You've done a couple other shows here locally. Yeah. And, and, and so this isn't a total new thing. So you're ready to, to go to the next level. Huh? Oh, definitely. I mean, like for K2, we were on K2 mm -hmm. like uh, in April, and that kind of brought us a lot, of, a few gigs out of that, and uh, a lot of online like, sales. Yeah, definitely online sales increased, and we're kind of trying to make our impact and get out there with our music as much as you can. And okay. he's promoting us a lot, doing his best, you know, Photoshop, doing all okay. that. So, so again, really cool. uh, tell the uh, audience your websites uh, where yeah. we can find you. So um, our music's available online on iTunes and. Um, Amazon Music and then Bandcamp. If you want to do that, we get a bigger okay. uh, get a bigger portion of that actually cool. than iTunes. That's, good. That's uh, Bandcamp.com. Okay. Uh, then our Facebook page is our main page right now. We're trying Very to do nice. a website. Okay. Well, it's the Travis Peterson Band here on Northwest Talent Spotlight. Check them out next time you get an opportunity.
think I didn't see you staring right at me You told your friends and they all turn around to see me Leaning on the stairwell So then I started walking down an aisle You left me with a smile and made my day And something my words couldn't say But I, I don't know what to do This is the part where I don't know what to say So do I make a move? Do I, or do I, or do I stay? regular day The streets are clear and the clouds have all been pushed away And now the sun's shining through I pull on my blue jeans and walk out the door Oh, there she is, a walk and a dog The single I saw the mom, yeah She's about five feet, no time to waste You got a smile on And you're making your way across town Don't know what to do But this is the part where I don't know what to say I said, do I make a move? And oh, will I make a move? You know, eventually I'll make my move Andy Madsen and tonight my guest is Rich Lander. He's been around the block for many years here in the Portland area, originally from New York. He's going to grace us with some of his new original music. So stick around, Northwest Talent Spotlight, focus on Rich Lander. I 
happy way. The answer will be clear in time. You're fast asleep, I'm wide awake. Dreaming about what's on my mind. And it's been so long since I've had time to write a song. Well, I thought that I might take this chance to say, I love you more with every facet. One said that love's a shark, but theirs was dead. Are the swimming wildly round? We're making plans, we're making puddles. I feel as though I'm seeing double. I feel like I can float above the ground. All the things will have to wait. The answers will be clear in time. You're fast asleep, I'm wide awake. You're dreaming about what's on my mind. And it's been so long since I've had time to write a song. Well, I thought that I might take this chance to say, I love you more with every passing day. Welcome to Northwest Talent Spotlight. I'm your host, Andy Madsen, and tonight my guest is Rich Lander. Welcome to the show. Hi, Andy. Uh, play some great music for us tonight. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and uh, how you got started in the business. Sure. Um, I'm originally from New York, mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of time there. Uh, I was playing a lot of the clubs in Manhattan, played CBGBs quite a bit, and was kind of involved in the what we used to call the new wave scene back oh, yeah. in New York. Yeah. Um, eventually moving to Los Angeles, where um, I hooked up with a band called the Bus Boys. Right, yep. um, heard of them. People have seen them in uh, 48 Hours with uh, oh, yeah. Eddie Murphy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, we toured around the country quite a bit. And then... Was um, that a good experience? Did that help you uh, see things on a national level as far as well, seeing how it, the industry It was a great works? experience. Um, it was kind of interesting because um, the Bus Boys, as you know, had worked their way up the ladder of success. And then I met them about... Maybe here. <laughs> but we were still playing 1,200, 1,500 seaters, pretty mm -hmm. much selling them out. Sure. Got to see a lot of great venues, and they were a fabulous band, and uh, it was a great experience for me. I'll bet it was. Uh, speaking of bands and whatnot, uh, first instruments that you picked up, I know you play multiple instruments. Tell a little bit about yes. your range of musicianship. Uh, did you study at, I believe, Hofstra? Is that correct? That's correct, yeah, yeah. Hofstra okay. University. Um, 
Before I got there, I started um, a little earlier, and uh, my first instrument was actually the accordion. Okay. Which I still do play and, and do play okay. on the on the album. Okay. Um, and uh, then when I got to high school, I realized that mm, perhaps piano seemed a little, <laughs> a little bit more little hipper, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, so I started playing piano. I had a, a, a wonderful uh, jazz teacher named uh, Art Doolittle, who was okay. quite a famous uh, jazz musician back east. And then when I did go to Hofstra, um, I pretty much studied classical piano there. Okay. Um, and um, it was kind of interesting because my classical teacher, um, Valentino Marconi, was uh, <laughs> actually way crazier than the crazy jazz guy. So I saw a lot of different aspects of people who were musicians and how they were, you know, what they were like, what made them tick. And sure. somehow I became one of them. <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, yeah. So then you moved up to the Portland area. You've been up here for a little while. Uh, yeah, I've been up here about 17 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been pretty fortunate. been played with a lot of great bands over that time. Uh, I was a member of Five Guys They Mow for a while. Right. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, yeah, just give us a little rundown, maybe yeah. five or six of the bands that you've been in that people yeah, might then, recognize. Um, then I got moved more, more into original music. And um, I did a couple of wonderful years with uh, King Black Acid, which oh, is right. a very, very popular mm -hmm. Portland band, and then I played uh, in another band called Jesus Presley, Presley yes, which so. is actually uh, playing again. Where we really, we, yeah, the the a, a, a club owner over at the Candlelight asked us to come in and play shows. So we're actually going to be doing some shows. Is this that year. fun to kind of reunite with those guys? Or? Oh, it's very very fun, and it's always fun when you bring a fourteen piece band in a tiny space like the Candlelight. Yeah, oh yeah. I that's end up out on the dance floor with my <laughs> keyboards, like kind of fending. That's, that's fending such a people wonderful off. club. I've, I've been going there many yeah. years, and that's just a great place to play. Yeah, but we have a bunch of albums, a bunch of songs, and we were just. Uh, Recently, I was talking to the guys about what songs we were doing because we we're choosing off of, I think we have eight or nine mm -hmm. albums from Jesus Presley. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And well, um, I've done a lot of sessions. with. Okay. Uh, I played in, on albums with Richard M. Fontaine, Floater, mm -hmm. Amelia, uh, Brothers of the Baladi. I've kind of hit the Portland, done, done Portland the thing, gamut. So, <laughs> so do you, uh, I ask a few people these kind of questions. Uh, do you enjoy the satisfaction of, of doing a recorded? music or does a live performance I mean they both drive you in different ways but what is there a yeah. preference that you they're they're very they're very very different experiences mm. um, in the studio you have time to go over things fix things Fine -tune it add right. other parts like I, there might be two or three of me floating around on on some songs right. um, where the live thing is so immediate and so exciting especially if you're in front of the big crowd and it, right things might turn out just a little bit different that time and it doesn't always sound the same yeah it doesn't always really sound can. the same and you know I I think I really I, I lean towards the live thing I don't want right, to want to discount prefer, the, the no, studio but the studio uh, gives you time to hone that song but when you hit the live stage you're able to maybe give it your own live flavor to uh, say hey go ahead take an extra long solo in a certain part so to speak yes. things like yep, that so for sure um, so you started out four or five with accordion. Uh, give us some of the other instruments you play. You play piano, you obviously play guitar. Yeah, I play uh, mandolin quite a bit. Mandolin, And okay. um, there's a mandolin even on the album. <laughs> and um, I play, uh, what else is there? I, um, I, I play, um, you know, of course the guitars. I'm, right. I'm, I'm blanking. I played percussion. Okay. I play uh, vibes and uh, marimbas and a little bit of drum kit here and there. I play bass. And uh, I kind of get around. If you don't have to blow into it, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have some more music uh, with Rich coming up here on Northwest Talent Spotlight. So stick around. Great guest, great music. Northwest Talent Spotlight. Just miserable 
Welcome back. My guest tonight is Rich Lander. Uh, enjoying your music tonight very much. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the songs. This is your new album. It's about time. Uh, people can find it where, number one? Um, well, of course, it's on iTunes, like mm -hmm. everything else. Uh, you can get it at CD Baby, mm -hmm. cdbaby.com slash Rich Landar. And there's also a lot of good uh, information on us at ReverbNation.com. Right, that's a good site. Landar. I like that one Real as good well. Site. You know, there's so many mm -hmm. social networks now that it's it's... It's different, you, you know, you talk about the years that you've been doing this, uh, how the industry has changed as far as, you know, you had to have that perfect recording to go give a producer to try and make it big, where now there's so many uh, avenues to, to, to create the yeah. right product and then just have it come out through different avenues to yeah, get it distributed. Yeah, that's, that's true, and a lot of that is what kind of enabled me to make that album because I've been, the, the reason I named it It's About Time mm -hmm. is I've been working on it for probably close to nine years. Really? On and off, in between other projects, mm -hmm. having some time here and there. About a year and a half ago, I decided this needed to get done, mm -hmm. and I started working on it in earnest. I, um, I did probably 80% of it on my computer, okay. either at home, or I did quite a bit of the work, the keyboard parts, the bass parts, some of the vocal parts. Mm -hmm. I did in hotel rooms wherever right. I was touring. I would, I would wake up and instead of just knocking off for the day, right, I'd, I'd right. have a session. And um, I recorded some of it at Rex uh, Post here oh, in right. Portland. Mm -hmm. I did the drums there and most of the lead vocals with Brent Rogers, who's a great engineer. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so once I decided that I really needed to finish it, it, 
took about a year, year and a half from there. Yeah, it, it, once you get started that long, yeah. you better spend a little bit more just to make sure the polish is on everything. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of your favorite tracks that you did on this. Obviously, yeah. they're all great, but uh, maybe <laughs> some, some that maybe stand out. I do like uh, some of the, the, the different styles that you try to visit. Everything's yeah. not just one style throughout the whole album. So I, that, That's quite true. Um, <laughs> Well, the, fir the first one we played earlier, that was Love Song 3 AM, and mm -hmm. that's a love song for my wife. There she deserves it more than anyone could ever know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for me, that's like a real kind of sweet pop song. It's driven by sure. the acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that, that one kind of stands like that. My Week, the other song mm -hmm. we played, that was my attempt to write a song like Stormy Monday, where you list the days of the week, and right. you explain right. what happens on every day. Although I maybe didn't pick the right week, you know. Is this a, a true life experience, some of it? Uh, yeah, quite, quite, pull a, it in there. quite a bit of it. And, uh, you know, then uh, Minute to Kill, um, that's a song about people who, they, 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 they hit a point of inertia. They, they just get somewhere and then they're right. just stuck and they got a minute to kill. They don't know which what way to turn, they don't know what to do. And that's my attempt to try to to come at that a little bit. Very cool. I, I know you have some big plans coming up uh, in the next couple months. You're uh, going to be touring Europe. Uh, tell um, us a little bit about that's right. that. That's right. I'm going over to uh, Switzerland. I've got a shows in uh, Basel, Zurich, Freiburg, and then I think a second show in, have, in, have you in toured? Basel. I just uh, like seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> You've been to Europe many times? Or? I have not. This will be my first time. Wow, I'm so what really a great excited. way to, to uh, see, and, the, see the world and, and perform as well for yeah. different uh, and then, audiences. And then I'll be playing. I know I've got a show in Wales, and I'm currently trying to hook up a couple of shows in England while I'll be there, too. So it's pretty exciting. It is, to, uh, <laughs> to, I mean, to uh, travel the seas and just a new country, it just not only just being a tourist, but just... Uh, presenting you as, as an yeah. artist and to see how uh, people across the world uh, sometimes see things differently. So this is a good experience for yeah. you as well. I'm pretty excited about it because um, a lot of my music, while it is disparate genres, the overall header is still to me like American, Americana right. sort of music. So I'm hoping that that'll be interesting for the people like in Switzerland, for example, or, you know. Right, England. yeah, a lot of people, you know, just like, uh, how we fell in love with the Beatles, they were from England. I think there is still a lot of uh, interest in American music, American rock and roll, folk I rock. I think so. Uh, the, the music, that it, there's it's a lot that what you're writing is, seems very timeless, that if I put this CD on 10 years from now, it would still hold, hold its value. So, I sure hope so. so um, <laughs> Anyway, I appreciate you being on our show tonight. Uh, what you. are you going to end uh, with? You got another song for us? Yeah, we're going to end with My City is Burning, which okay. um, I actually wrote about the L.A. riots. I was living there at the time. Okay. and um, Another life experience. Another, well, most of my songs do come from my own, my own okay. experience. And My City is Burning on the CD is particularly uh, interesting for me. Tahoe Jackson oh, right. sings a mm -hmm. duet with me, who's a wonderful soul singer here in Portland. Mm -hmm. And we have a hundred voice choir. Wow. On the CD that I brought into Rex Post. Really, I brought, in 20, I brought in 25 people, but I recorded them four times. Four times. <laughs> and, and it sounds like 100 yeah. people just, ah. And, cool. and it was very fun. Actually, when I premiered the CD, the choir came down and sang with me. And wow. it was very, fun. very fun. I guess that's great uh, appreciation of your music to have all these people want to get involved and, and support you in your cause. Yes. Well, uh, my guest tonight has been Rich Lander. This is Northwest Town Spotlight. Stick around. He's going to play his last song for us. It's called My City is Burning here on Northwest Talent Spotlight.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Northwest Talent Spotlight. I'm your host, Andy Madsen, and tonight we're going to feature the music of Mel Kubik. She is a former and current member of Quarter Flash, and she is out on her own. She has a couple new albums out, so stick around. The music of Mel Kubik here on Northwest Talent Spotlight. Not the slightest of clues that you're feeling 